Hey, salut You know what is really funny I do believe that Microsoft is increasing the market share of Linux desktop as we speak. So you're gonna be like, Air Max, are you losing your mind? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm dead serious. I don't know if you are aware of what's going on right now on internet, but for the last three weeks, every like free post, every five comments, I see someone talking about Microsoft Recall. Man, this thing is crazy. Like, it's literally crazy. But when I watch also, like, all the other comments of users which are, like, aware of their own privacy, which are willing to, you know, jump off the ship of Microsoft Windows and get into the ship of the Linux open source, free of mind, by the way, but... I'm like, guys, are, are you really ready to switch bot? Are you, are you ready? And um, I, I think you are not. At least not if you don't watch this video. So let's get into it. I, I'm going to talk about that in this video. Let's go. So when it comes to switch from Windows to Linux, I think the most important point is your mindset. And I'm not talking about, you know, being zen or, you know, stress-free because you're going to encounter a lot of issues. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the approach, I would say like the perspective you need to have when moving from an operating system to another. What I'm trying to explain here is that on Windows, you have been using the operating system a certain way. If you switch to Linux, it's going to be a different experience. It doesn't mean it's going to be worse. It just means that you need to change the perspective of things. So I'm going to give you a simple example. On Windows, if you want to install any type of application, you go on a website, you download the application, you double click on it, you go through the install process and you are done. On Linux, it's not really how it works. You could find the same application, but you don't have to download it this way. It will be more like, um, you know, the way you use your cell phone. You go through the App Store or like Play Store or whatever you want to call it. You go there, you click, you, 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 sorry, you press the, your little finger on the screen, and then you search for the application within the store and you download it and then you're good to go. And this is one example, but I, I could find like, hundred of them where the approach need to be reset. Your mindset need to be reset. If you are willing to do the action you are doing on Windows within Linux and expect the same result, it's not going to work. So I would say before doing anything, really think about that and try to gauge if you are willing to change your mindset. If you are not willing to change your mindset, I will definitely like stay on Windows. I will not even try to install Linux because you're going to be in a lot of pain. I want to be clear, like you're going to be in a lot of pain. So avoid that, stay on Windows, you know, trying to find a way to debloat it or whatever. But you really need to change your mindset. If you do that, it's going to make your experience way, way, way smoother. And you do understand that. By changing your mindset, you need to reset from your like lowest level of like beginner approach. Everything you learn on Windows might not be transferable on Linux. Super important. So you start from the bottom and it's good. I'm telling you, you're going to have certainly like a good community around you willing to help you. You're going to have a lot, lot of documentation around. But you need to, to do this reset. Please do it. I see too many people like getting in pain for nothing. You're a noob, you're a beginner, and that's okay. We, we all started somewhere. Now, the second point I want to mention, which is going to be the first real problem you're going to encounter, is choosing your Linux distribution. There is like hundreds out there. There is like thousands. So how do you choose it? And I'm going to choose it for you. <laughs> like, let's be clear. I'm going to choose it for you. If you are an ultra beginner, go on Linux Mint. 
Like, please, don't go on any other distro. Go on Linux Mint. Like, no matter what you do, if you are a content creator, if you are a gamer, if you are just browsing around, if you are, like, doing anything, please, as a beginner, go on Linux Mint. That's all I have to say. You can be, you know, a little bit exotic, I would say, or a little bit adventurous, and go with over distro, which is fine. But then you're going to go back to the first point. You're going to have to accept that some of those distributions, they might be really hard to handle. They might be really complex for a beginner, right? If I ask a one-year-old to run a marathon, it's going to be really tough, right? Like it's, it's not going to happen. You need to learn how to crawl, then you need to learn how to walk, then you need to, run, need to learn how to run, and then when you learn how to run, you might pretend to any type of competition, but you need to understand it's not going to happen in, in two days. The best way to learn how to crawl in the Linux world is Linux Mint, in my opinion. I've been doing a lot of testing. I've been doing a lot of benchmarking. I've been, I've been like, I would say, like in this Linux world for a long time now. And I'm telling you, Mint is the way to go. So don't bother the other one. Now, if you think Li Linux Mint is too limited for you, good for you. You are on your own there. I made a lot of like different videos. I really encourage you to go watch them. Whether you are a beginner or not, I have a full series on Linux Mint. I really advise you to go watch it. I think it's like five or six videos. I'm going to put the link in the description below. And then if Mint, for whatever reason, is not enough for you, and I get it, well, I made a lot of like review of all the other distro when it comes to gaming and content creation, because this is really like the the focus I have when I review those distro, please go watch them and make yourself an idea of where you are at and where your real needs in terms of like computing are set. Now the point number three. Number three is about the hardware issue. So if you come from Windows and you are willing to change your mindset and you choose a distribution to start on, which is Linux Mint, if you are a total beginner, please, you are at a point now where you're going to encounter hardware issue. And hardware issue is pretty straightforward. Does the manufacturer support Linux? Yes or no? If yes, good for you. If no, is there a third party developer of community which has developed some type of alternative to make your hardware work on Linux? If it's a no to those two questions, you arrive at the number three option there for the hardware, which is like, it's not supported. So if you are really dependent on certain type of hardware, before you even switch, make your research. I would say though, like be aware of the issue related to it. Try to, you know, do it on your own because I know there is a lot of like old posts, old forum where someone's going to mention an issue with an hardware and then the issue is like solved in the, you know, month or year after. So it's not really an issue anymore. So I would say install the distro, see if you encounter any type of issue. And if it's confirmed that it's not solved, well, you are in for a ride. And when I say you are in for a ride, there is really two solutions here. Uh, you believe that the hardware might be supported one day, which could be the case. And there is a project, like people working on it. So somehow, like, help them. You know, you can contribute, you can give your feedback, you can test. There is many ways you can contribute within the open source world or you believe it's done and it doesn't work. And in this case, uh, well, you're going to have to switch back to Windows if it's this hardware is really a requirement for your workflow or whatever. Or you're going to have to switch to that something which works. But again, this is going to be one of the real issues you're going to encounter. So try to be prepared. Now the fourth one. And the fourth one is, is also super important. It's related to the application. And I would say application, but also games, like everything related to software. So by that, I mean, like, if you are using Adobe Suite and you want to use that on Linux, well, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I do believe Photoshop is 
not compatible, but you can use it through uh, a Wine, which is a translator between Linux and Windows. So you might be able to use Photoshop, for example. But uh, it's 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 gonna be a pain. So now we come again from you know it's gonna be exactly the same way of thinking that uh, the hardware related issue. Do you need the software? Is that a requirement in your workflow? If not, well, you're gonna have to go back to Windows or, or maybe add, um, maybe Mac, for example, if you don't want to stay on, on Windows anymore. But this is going. This is the place we are at right now in Linux, and you're gonna have to accept it. It's sad. Uh, my personal thought about it is that if more and more users are switching to Linux, those developers they're gonna have to make applications which are also compatible with Linux. A perfect example is DaVinci Resolve. It's, in my opinion, like the best video editor out there, and they propose a native version of their software on Linux. So it's not perfect, but it works better than on Windows. Believe it or not. So, again, you are the one making the choice, but you have to take that in consideration before switching. You don't want to switch, you know, do everything there, and figure it out two weeks after that, or, you know, even like three days after that you can't run some key application on your PC. When it comes to gaming, there is some game which have kernel level anti-cheat, which is gonna be a problem always on Linux. The funny part here, the developer of those games, they could create ways to make it work on Linux. So I don't want to get technical here, but it's possible, like technically it's possible to have a, a level kernel anti-cheat on Linux. It wouldn't be exactly the same as on Windows, but it would still be there. Now, is the Linux community like really open about it? I don't know. I don't think so, to be fair, and I'm with them on this camp, but it's technically possible. What I would say though is like, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Game like uh, Valorant, League of Legends, uh, PUBG, Call of Duty, like all those games which are multiplayer and have a kernel level anti cheat, they are not going to be on Linux anytime soon. Because it's technically possible, and, 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 and I had to mention it, it might happen one day because the market share of Linux users is so big that they have to adapt their anti-cheat to the platform, which I do believe is going to happen one day. But it's not going to be like today or, you know, in the next year. It's going to take time. But this is something you need to take in consideration. If you are a big, um, you know, League of Legends player, and you spend like a lot of time on it, it's not going to work on Linux, unfortunately. Now let's talk about the fifth point. And this one is gonna be a little bit rough on the edge, but I need to tell it to you like straight to your face. The problem from Windows, from switching from Windows to Linux might be you. And you're gonna be like, Air Max, like, who are you to gatekeep me out of my Linux dream. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say to you, like I've, I've made like maybe like 200 videos on Linux now on my YouTube channel, maybe more. And I, I noticed that some of the users, they are just not willing to spend time to learn and adapt to a new operating system. They don't. So my first point was about changing the perspective, okay? But on top of that, if you are not willing to spend time to learn, if you are not willing to, you know, like get into it, it's not going to happen. Like nobody is going to come and, you know, and help you like and type for you on your little keyboard and be like, oh no, this is a command you need to type or this is how you need to do. No, you're going to have to go out there and search. So the good news for you is that depending on the distro you choose, it's going to be way, way, way easier than any other one, okay? So, you know, it sounds a little bit messy what I'm saying, but if you 
follow my advice number two, which was Linux Mint. There is a huge database of information out there, like in different formats, you know, YouTube video, forum post, Reddit post, or whatever, where you can find way to do things. But you're going to notice pretty fast that some of those videos are old, some of those videos might be outdated, some of those posts might not, you know, be true anymore because there is an evolution, right, uh, within Linux. You're going to have to do your due diligence and spend some time there. And again, like if you don't have the time to spend there, it's, it's not going to happen. Okay, so... I don't believe it's going to be a huge amount of time, but you need to be in this mindset that you're going to have to relearn things. And relearning things means spending time on it. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty important one that most of the people who want to switch tend to forget. So guys, how do I conclude with this one? I want to be, again, like super transparent with you. My switch from Windows to Linux, from a desktop, I would say, usage, was done like three years ago. And I switched from Windows 10 to, uh, I think at the time was Endeavor OS. I tried over distro and then I was like, okay, this is what I want. I switched to Endeavor OS because I, I was not really a Linux noob. I've been using like Linux on server for like, I don't know, maybe 25 years. So I was not really a, a beginner, but I, I was a beginner when it comes to desktop. And I, I went for the hard mode, okay, which was Arch, because Endeavor OS is literally Arch with a, a, a different, like, so some different, like, little like reference there but it's hard and it's hard it's hard and I, I would not advise anyone to go through this path but now like three years later i'm telling you like this is not the same game anymore this is so much easier like you have no idea this is so much easier it still requires a little bit of work from your end. But, you know, I think the game at the end is worth it. I don't know if it makes sense, but like the time you're going to spend there is going to put you in a position like you are not going to go back and be like, oh, I miss Windows. It's not going to happen if you are able to push through. So that's why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because I'm feeling that some of the users are going to be like, oh, yes, I'm going to switch to Linux. No problem. I'm just going to use all my experience from Windows and I'm going to be like golden. No, it doesn't work this way. So, yeah, I really hope you find this video helpful. And what I would like you to tell me in the comment below is... Uh, how was your experience moving from Windows to Linux or any operating system, really? Like, just, just switching to Linux. How was it? Did you enjoy it? Like, like uh, did you find any type of help in content creator or even like me, like some of the video I made for you guys? Because really, I tried to smoothen the process. Um, just let me know, okay? Guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to give a thumbs up, to subscribe to the channel. And something I want to mention again here, I'm really thankful for all of you guys who helped me uh, to grow the channel at, at this level. Whether it's, you know, just a thumbs up, a share or whatever, or uh, a financial support, because a lot of you now are members of La Crème de la Crème Club uh, here on this channel or on Patreon. So I, I want to thank you guys. You guys are the best. You give me the opportunity uh, to create this content and share my experience and knowledge to all of you guys. So you guys are the best. Thank you very much. Uh, see you in the next one. And until then, bisous, bisous, papa. <laughs> Take care, guys.